Hey everyone, welcome to my Smart Home Gems here. I've been using Philips Hue for over a year now, and I wanted to share my findings with you all, um, hopefully to let you all make the move to either Philips Hue, or generally just make the move, start moving to find your smart home and automating things that's just so simple and make your life so much easier. So first of all, let's talk about my setup. Um, I have about 12 light bulbs by Philips Hue. I have two motion sensors. I have five of these light switches, not necessarily this one. I think this is the V2. And I, the, I only have one V2 and the rest are V1s. Um, I don't have a V1 to hand here, but I might, I might add one in, in, in the edit. Um, uh, I have two smart buttons and I have two smart plugs. Uh, but quick disclaimer, the smart plugs that I have are not Philips Hue's, because uh, Philips Hue ones are so expensive. And the one that I have, I actually got two for the price of one Philips Hue um, plug, which personally, I don't want to spend my money on something that's more expensive for no obvious reason. Uh, and everything I have connects to the Philips Hue hub. So first of all, let's talk about the lights. Uh, so there's three different types of lights you can get with Philips Hue. Uh, or three main ones. So you've got white, white ambience, and then colour. I would fully recommend if you're going to make the moves to Philips Hue, really think about what rooms need what, because white is the cheapest one. White ambience is then the next cheap or more expensive one, and then colour is very expensive. We're talking probably 50 to 60 pounds per bulb, which is a lot of money for a bulb. A bulb. Uh, to quote Paul Hibbert, corporate greed. Personally, yeah, have a think about what bulbs you want in each room, because there's certain rooms where white is absolutely fine. There are certain rooms where white ambience is going to be really fine. For example, I use white ambience in my landing because on a night I want there to be a, a dim sort of yellow colour to the bulb and on a morning I want it to be really bright to wake you up because there's no natural light on my landing. It's just, if the doors are all shut, no light comes in at all. So that bulb is the only thing that illuminates the, the landing. And then there's some rooms where maybe colour is an option. Maybe you want to have it in your living room, maybe you have guests around and you maybe like to party and you want those colours. Um, for the most part, the colour bulb, when are you going to use it? I mean, I've had a colour bulb and I can only think of a few occasions where I've used it. The last time I used it was probably six months ago because my sister-in-law has just sort of started talking and understanding different colours and we're sort of going, what colour is this? And she'd go green if it was green. Sometimes she'd say it's green when it was purple, but that's kids for you. They don't always know what they're talking about, but we won't get to that. It's a different story. Um, <laughs> the lights are really reliable. I've never had an issue with them. Um, I might talk about that more in a conclusion, actually. Um, I'll probably forget, but remember they're reliable. <laughs> Uh, so there's lots of different accessories you can get with Philips Hue. Uh, I've already alluded to the smart switches and the motion sensors. You can also get a smart plug and you can get some buttons. So start with the worst. The buttons aren't my favourite, if I'm being totally honest. And I actually don't know where mine have gone. Um, what I had done is I put them on either side of the bed for me and my partner to turn off um, the lights. Um, but they run out of battery probably within six to six to eight months of them being used probably every day. And for me, that's just not good enough. I don't want to have to replace a battery in something all the time. But that being said, I've had these for over a year now and I haven't had to replace the battery in any of these switches or the motion sensors, which is great. I don't, I don't want to have to faff around with that sort of thing. So, yeah, so battery life on the buttons, not a fan. Battery life on everything else, great. I'm quite a fan of the design of the Philips Hue lineup here, but it's quite minimal. Um, the V1 switches, um, the only difference to note is that the two brightness nozzle bits here are separate buttons completely, and where it says Hue here is actually the off switch, so it'd be on, off, brighter, dimmer. Um, but they're quite this this version here, I really like this design. It's minimal. Um, 
It's also good to note that the sensors here actually have a magnet on the back so you can attach it to say a wall mount and then I guess orientate it the way that you want, uh, which is fantastic. I personally have a light switch cover which holds the Philips Hue switches on each light switch because I don't want people coming in and turning off the light switch uh, because that would obviously stop any automations from running and it would actually stop the light from being able to be turned on and off using my voice. Uh, or the app. Um, so I have a cover to stop people doing that by accident um, and effectively this replaces the light switch which actually surprisingly still confuses people who don't have a smart phone and don't understand what this is despite the fact it's got the on off button there um, and a dimmer on it people don't seem to look at it and think what does this do? Instead they say how do I turn on the light? <laughs> it's very annoying. In conclusion uh, Philips Shoes is really reliable, uh, it's a great option for creating your smart home, really easy to add new bulbs, new accessories, easy to add an automation through the Philips Hue app or through Google Home or Alexa using routines or automations. And generally, I don't know if I've said this enough, reliable, so reliable, I've never had an issue with Philips Hue where Google is unable to communicate with it or the app isn't communicating with the hub to control the lights. Um, I've never tried Philips Hue using Bluetooth uh, through the app directly to a light switch or an accessory. Um, personally, everything for me goes through the hub, um, but I've never had an issue using it that way. I don't know if Bluetooth is the same is the same, I guess, amount of reliability, given that Bluetooth has a more limited range, as far as I'm aware, compared to Zigbee, which is what I believe Philips Hue uses. I will link in the description as well the smart plugs that I use, which are a cheap alternative to the Philips Hue ones. I think the Philips Hue one's about £40, the one I have is about 20 but if inflation's happened, they may not be the same price. Um, the cost of Philips Hue is unreasonable. I personally do not recommend it. I'm using this as a pointer now. I don't recommend them for the price. Uh, I don't recommend Philips Hue for the price. Personally, I only buy Philips Hue products during Black Friday or any other discount events because the price is astronomical. I mean, like I said before, about £60 per bulb is just not reasonable. Um, I'd love to see them bring those prices down permanently one day because the bulbs are really nice and reliable, but the price is just, it's not good. Uh, also, the app, um, while the app is really good in some aspects, it's really poor when it comes to needing to move a device or rename a device. Um, as an example, during the summer I had unplugged uh, a smart plug from our living room which controlled a floor lamp and we used, a, used it for a fan instead and I moved that fan around. Um, but to rename that device was just a hassle and then to move it was a hassle. My parents have recently moved a light bulb and they couldn't figure out how to move that light bulb to another room, which meant their controllers kept controlling this light bulb which wasn't in the room. Um, eventually I showed them how to move it, um, but to me it should be obvious. Uh, you shouldn't really have to Google how to move a device, especially when in, the, in most applications like the Google Home app, you can just find your device and move it. It's as simple as that. In Philips Hue, you go into settings, go into lights or accessories, find the bulb, edit the bulb. It's just, it's such a convoluted way to do such a simple task. Um, so for that reason, I would recommend some up updates to the apps, I guess, user experience and user interface. Um, that's personally my opinion there. I don't know if other people really suffer with that. All I know is the people around me have had this issue. So let me know what you guys think. Do you use Philips Hue? Are you going to move to Philips Hue? Or do you have a better alternative to Philips Hue that's just as reliable but better value for money? Let me know in the comments. Feel free to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. On each of my light switches, because when you turn the light switch off, it actually stops the bulb from being able to be turned back on from a smart device. Uh, from, from, blah, blah, blah.